Hi, it's Chris Lyons at Shure, and we're here talking about earphone and headphone specifications. And here to help us out is Shure's own Matt Angstrom. Now, Matt, when people are buying earphones and headphones, they're very often confronted with a whole list of technical specifications, either on the package or on a product spec sheet. And a lot of times these are just confusing. So I thought we'd talk about a few of those, and you can help to clarify them. Uh, the first one on the list, frequency range. What is frequency range, and why is it important? A frequency range specifies the overall uh, range that a headphone or earphone will operate from where it starts producing sound to where it stops producing sound, um, typically from the very lowest of the lows to the very highest of the highs. Okay, and how is frequency range different from frequency response? Well, frequency range is usually two numbers. Uh, a frequency response is often a picture that would indicate the actual sound of the headphone. It'll show the overall shape of the sound. Meaning exactly how the headphones or earphones responds to different frequency ranges. Right, and it's perfect for a quick way to identify if a product might have more or less bass or mid or treble. Now, I know that when we're talking about earphones, there's an additional variable that comes into play that varies from person to person. What, what's the story there? Well, everyone's hearing is very much like fingerprints. It's unique to the individual. So the way you hear an earphone or a headphone is very different than the way that I hear it based on the inner structure of our ears. Okay, so if I'm hearing a particular pair of earphones, the way that they sound to me is not necessarily the way that they're going to sound to you or somebody else. Correct. So it's a very personal listening experience regardless of what the numbers on the page say. Yes, and it's further influenced by things like the type of music, the type of player, and actually the sleeve that you use on the earphone. Okay, good to know. All right, another specification that comes up a lot is sensitivity. What does sensitivity mean in regards to earphones and headphones? Sensitivity is a good guide for how loud a product might get given a certain input power setting. Does that mean that uh, if I've got a portable player versus a, uh, say, uh, some rack-mounted piece of equipment or a mixing console, uh, are those going to be putting out different amounts of power? Usually. The portable players tend to put out the lowest amount of, of head, uh, power acceptable for uh, headphones or earphones. A plugged-in device or a mixing board, those often have ample amounts of power and can drive things to much louder volumes. Since we're talking about the amount of power that drives the earphones and headphones, let's talk about the spec of maximum input power. Um, what is that going to tell me and, and what's a typical number that we might see? Well, a typical number in uh, a, a portable headphone type product or studio headphone type product would be about a, a, a watt of power. In some applications, in particular DJ, uh, the headphone amplifiers can put out uh, up to three watts of power. That's a huge amount of power for something um, that's right next to your eardrum. So maximum input power is also a guide to say if you go above this or even up to this range, you may cause damage to your product. Okay, so really it's a way of me being able to gauge whether the earphones and headphones are a good match for the product that I'm going to plug them into and the amount of power that's being supplied. Right. And then last but not least, impedance. This is one that always confuses people. Uh, what does it really mean, and is this something that only engineers need to be concerned about? Well, impedance is important because you want to make certain that you're at least following a couple important rules of thumb, which is that your player or source device should have an output impedance that is lower, uh, oftentimes by a factor of eight, than the impedance of your earphone or headphone. Okay, so that means if my uh, music player has got an impedance of, say, eight ohms, then I'd like the impedance of my earphones and headphones to be at least a few times higher than that. 64 ohms would be a good rule of thumb. It's never a, a, an absolute by any means, but you'd definitely be safe if your headphone has an eight times greater impedance than your output amplifier. But it's not the case that if I compare two pairs of headphones and one has an impedance of 62 ohms and the other is 64 ohms, that doesn't mean the 64 ohm one is better, does it? No, it's definitely not a, a gauge of better. Sometimes it could mean more appropriate or less appropriate for certain type of products, but it often doesn't have a direct correlation to a specific sound quality or uh, volume level or sensitivity level. So ultimately though, all these numbers aside, what's really the best way for someone to compare two pairs of headphones or two pairs of earphones? Find a store that has the model you're curious about and go there and test it out. Because really you can only trust your own ears more than anything else. Right. Great. Well, thanks for helping us to understand more about earphone and headphone specifications. If you'd like to learn more about Shure earphones and headphones, please visit Shure.com.